Welcome to the Bushido Gang. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's Attack on Samurai, bringing you more coverage on my ADV OU tournament um, that is currently being held in my Discord, the Bushido Gang. So, uh, this is actually round two of the tournament. And for this round, uh, there were actually four games that happened. Um, unfortunately, I didn't make it to, uh, to this round. Uh, my opponent, um, Ed, actually made it. And for this round, he is going to be fighting uh, Watermess, uh, who is currently undefeated uh, right now. I mean, obviously, since he's made a round two. But, um, but yeah, um, for this game, I'm going to be talking, to, or I'm going to be talking about um, Ed versus Watermess. This is actually their uh, their second game, so I want to talk about this because, for one, it was actually requested by Ed for me to talk about it uh, because he was pretty he was actually pretty proud of this game, so. Um, I can't wait to actually or to actually review this game, um, but uh, but yeah, there were other games that happened as well. Um, but one of them actually didn't happen. It was uh, Kirudakis versus Everglade Late. Uh, that game um, ended up um, having to be a, a forfeit from a Galate. So uh, Kirudakis actually moves on to uh, moves on to the uh, to the finals. Um, then there was another game that actually happened. Uh, with um, with the winner of this game moving on to fight uh, Taiga, um, so yeah. So again, I'm gonna be co I'm gonna be going over uh, about three games. Um, I'm gonna go over this game and I'm gonna go over on um, the other game that happened with um, or the other game that happened with Taiga. So uh, so yeah. So um, before we get started, uh, please make sure to leave a like, comment. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Um, again, my goal for this vid is to try and teach you guys a little bit more about the ADV meta game and just you know like build your knowledge on it. So that way, when you go in, well, that way when you get on the ADV ladder or if you get into an ADV tournament, you know what to do. So uh, let's dive in. Let's talk about this game. So, Watermouse versus Ed. Um, now, again, I've seen this game already, but I do think that this might have been my favorite game <laughs> honestly this might have been my favorite game so far um i was thinking about reviewing their first game that they had but again ed insisted me on on uh, doing this one instead doing game two so um so yeah let's talk about game two shall we so game two you have ed on this side and we have water mess on this side mess is going to lead off with medi as ed leads off with celebi here comes a shadow ball coming down on the celebi doing 60 percent so the fact that it's 60% tells me that this Celebi is going to be a defensive variant, as he does show off Leech Seed 2 as well. Um, and also this Celebi is decently fast. So, um, so yeah, it's probably like around, because let's see, Medicham usually goes up to max speed. So 284 speed means that the Celebi might be somewhere around 300, most likely. Um, again, most Celebi don't really go max speed unless they're going to be like an offensive variant. So. This one being like, I'm guessing like 309 speed. Um, again, I, I know it's very specific, but that's usually around the speeds here that uh, that Celebi can't go for if they want to try to outspeed something like you know Moltres and such, and then be able to butt, and then be able to baton pass out if need be. Um, but yeah, um, this is an interesting lead uh, for for one uh, for one Ed going for elite C turn one on Metacham. Usually Metacham is a pretty aggro mon. Um, just because, like, there, you don't really know what it could do. Um, it could be banded, or it could be, like, a four attacking one. Which are both, which, both of them are all, like, dangerous. Or all of them are dangerous. So, um, so yeah. And in case you didn't know, in Gen 3, Shadow Ball is actually a physical move. So that's why Shadow Ball did so much damage to Celebi. Even though Medicham has very bad special attack. Um, but yeah, it goes off its attack stat. So, or, I mean, it goes off uh, Medicham's attack stat. So, um, so yeah. Um... Again, with it dealing 60, that tells me that this Celebi is pretty defensive. So for it to take it that well is uh, definitely says a lot. So this is going to force um, Ed to switch out because he doesn't want to take another Shadow Ball. It comes Skarmory on the switch in as um, as Watermass switches into his own Celebi. So this Celebi goes for Baton Pass to get more initiative going and then brings in, and then brings in Zapdos as Ed goes for the Spike. So that Spike is actually going to be pretty important uh, because that's going to wear down uh, Mess's team quite a bit, especially with his especially dealing with his offensive mons. And again, the Metacham and also being the Celebi. So that spike is going to help a lot um, right now. In comes Pert on the, uh, or in comes Pert on the Switch. Um, as, Ed's, as, um, as Mess switches out and brings in Starmie on the Switch in. So 
Uh, Pert actually went for, so I mean, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Ed went for the Protect there. Um, I think Protect was fine on Medicham, uh, because like I said, Medicham can, uh, can do quite a bit, especially to a uh, defensive Pert, as again, with it being, with it showing Protect, or with, with Ed showing Protect from his Pert, that tells me that he's more likely a defensive variant. So, um, so yeah, um, even if, I honestly, I think in the position that he was in, um, that Ed was in, I definitely think that going for the damage is better. Um, I think going for like a water move or going for like Earthquake is, is still pretty decent. Um, or even going for Ice Beam too, that could still catch Celebi if need be. Um, so, I don't think Protect was exactly necessary, but I, I can see why he did it. Um, now, uh, so now Mess is going to go for the Rapid Spin on the Celebi switch in. Uh, so that's pretty good for him because that removes the spike down and comes Celebi back on the uh, on his own Celebi or on Ed Celebi to recover. And comes a Calm Mind from Messi Celebi. And now here comes a Light Screen. Now when I saw Light Screen, I was just like, yo. <laughs> like Light Screen Celebi is, is pretty, um, it's something you don't really see that much. Um, it's a, it's a very, uh, it's a very interesting tech. Um, can, it can be very beneficial for, uh, for Austin, for, uh, offensive teams. I'm um, again adding on that special bolt to help with the rest of the uh, with the rest of the squad. Um, bringing in the uh, Aerodactyl here on the uh, from the light screen is pretty good because again this LB could go for a calm mind to pass uh, to pass the set or to pass the stats to uh, to Zapdos or could just um or could just stay in here in Psychic too. So he does pass and he does bring in Porygon. So Porygon is a pretty good wall to uh, Aerodactyl, um, but it's not that great when you have to deal with spikes and sand as well. Um, which I won't spoil where the sand comes from, but, but, um, but yeah, this Porygon being in here, uh, means that this is, you know, Ed, this is a mess's only way to, uh, deal with it. Or I mean, it's one of its ways to deal with the, uh, Aerodactyl. So what Ed goes for on the switching is he actually is going to switch out. I mean, so I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry about that, but yeah, he does baton pass there on the, on the, uh, on the Celebi switching in the arrow. So then uh, Ed switches out and brings in Magneton on the Ice Beam. So this is a pretty good play. Uh, for one, does mean that uh, I mean showing the mag um, does significant does signify like what kind of team that Ed's gonna be using here. Um, again, a pretty bulky team, I, if I'd say so. Um, while he's dealing with a uh, message team, which is more. You know, have, which is more offensive based because he's got the double baton pass going on, potentially triple if the Medicham has baton pass as well. Um, but yeah, so what is Ed gonna do here? Ed is going to go for a toxic, which is actually very good for him because that means that with Porygon getting toxic and also if Ed can get spikes down too, then Arrow is gonna be doing a lot of damage to that Porygon. Uh, now, what Mess is gonna try and do is he's gonna try to remove this toxic by tracing. Um, by using its trace ability to remove the toxic from Celebi. So if Mess can get his get the Porygon on Celebi or on a, on Ed Celebi, then he can remove the toxic, and then Porygon can be a threat again. And this is going to be happening quite a bit um, throughout the game. So I just wanted to point that out there right now. Um, yeah, the T wave on uh, on on the uh, Mag is going to be pretty important because that will allow um, Mess to uh, deal with the to deal with uh, Magneton a lot more uh, a lot more effectively. So, what, Ed, what Ed's going to do is he's going to go for the Protect here to see what this Porygon goes for. It goes for an HP for Hidden Power. Most likely Hidden Power Ground or Hidden Power Fire. Um, just to, you know, like, put some pressure on that Magneton. Potentially even knock it out, especially with the plus one from the uh, from the Calm Mind Pass. So, Light Screen's going to go away and come Celebi on the Thunderbolt. So, goes for a Thunderbolt there. Uh, gets a pair on Celebi. I feel like... No, I think the Protect play was fine from... from um, from Ed, but at the same time, since he had the reflect up, or since he had the light screen up, he probably could have taken the hit, and then he could have gotten a decent chunk of damage off with Thunderbolt. Um, again, usually Porygon isn't fully, isn't like fully spadef, so Thunderbolt can still do a decent chunk even after, even after a plus one boost from Calm Mind. So, if I were him, I probably could have went for Thunderbolt regardless, um, especially because of that T wave coming off, it kind of makes Magneton not as useful. But in comes Mag, in comes Metagross on the. I'm assuming that Ed probably tried to go for a. Um, Probably tried to go for Toxic, or maybe he wanted a Thunderbolt again. Probably Toxic there. Um, but yeah, the Baton Pass in the Metagross is going to be pretty huge because this Metagross is not only faster than the Magneton, 
uh, but also it can just put a lot of pressure on him anyway. Granted, um, Ed does have Pert being his main wall to it, and also Skarmy as well. But let's see how how Mess is gonna play around. Um, gonna play around these two right here. So goes for the protect there with Ed, or Ed goes for protect on the uh, on the uh, meteor mash. Meteor mash doesn't do anything as he you know does that. Goes for the earthquake as he actually as Ed actually stays in. Um, which is fair to make. He doesn't know what kind of metagross it is. He doesn't know if it's banded. He doesn't know if it's banded or if it's like, or anything else, um, or whatever it could be. But yeah, the mash in the earthquake is pretty. It's pretty huge, uh, because that removes the magneton, and uh, that just makes Ed's job a lot harder to deal with. Uh, me to deal with metagross, and also just to get damage off in general on a lot of his um, on a lot of his mons, because Mess's team, um, doesn't really deal with electric types too well. It doesn't really deal with them too well, so um, losing Magneton is pretty huge, though. In comes Pert on the on whatever uh, meta it goes for, but he switches out, goes for the double actually, and brings in Arrow, which is pretty big because again, Arrow can put a lot of damage on him. Um, again, the Porygon is still toxic, which is still good for him. Again, if Ed can get a spike down, then he can deal with the Porygon a lot more effectively. And same with uh, breaking down Metagross and, and everything else here. Like, spikes are kind of key for him. So if he can get those spikes up, then uh, then Ed might be in a pretty good spot against uh, against Mess. But yeah, Arrow coming in here, um, pretty much to show to show Mess that um that hey, I'm about to hit you with some with some heat, with some HP flying or some HP bug, definitely. Definitely pretty threatening to uh, to mess. So what he's gonna do is switch out and go into Metagross on the HP bug. I know, right? HP bug. Um, and also that didn't really do that much. So this Metagross might have been uh, might have been pretty bulky. Uh, probably like pretty defensive. Probably like impish if anything. Um, but yeah, twenty percent on that definitely kind of tells. Um, but like, cause Arrow isn't like super weak. It, it's pretty strong, especially in ADV. Um, so for it to do twenty percent definitely tells what kind of Metagross this is. Um, but yeah, the fact he went for HP bug definitely says a lot about, um, about what kind of arrow this is, or I mean, not really, just kind of shows that he can deal with Celebi in just one shot with HP bug, um, but yeah, um, he's gonna switch out here and go into Skarmory on the mash, but Mess makes a better play to predict that and go into Starmie, which is good, goes for a Thunderbolt there. Protects with the Ed protects it. Goes into Celebi on the switch. Goes for a Thunderbolt again from Mess. Thunderbolt doesn't do too much. Um, and what he could do now is go for the Elite Seed if he wants to. But in comes Porygon on the light screen instead. Um, I do think that Elite Seed was better for uh, for Ed in my opinion. I think if you I think if he just Elite Seeded the Starmie, he might have gotten a little bit more initiative going. Since this Starmie just hard switched anyway. Um, but. Again, this does bait in the Porygon now. So with Porygon coming in, the Tontic is null and void. And pretty much Magneton's job was all for nothing. Um, he still has like another way to Tontic the Porygon. He has his uh, he has his Swampert, uh, which again, I'm assuming that his Swampert is going to be like a mono, a mono perk. Uh, with, the, with again, the set of Protect, Toxic, Surf, and then Refresh. Um, so if he has something like that, uh, then Ed can still pressure the Porygon. Um... Yeah, the light screen there is pretty huge. Or, I mean, the light screen there doesn't really... I don't think it really helps him. Not, at least not in this play. I think he should have just leap seated there. Because, um, I mean, even if even if Mess did go for Ice Beam, um, he can still recover out of it anyway and then just switch around if need be. Um, or I guess not really. But he could he still could have, like, light screened on the, uh, on the recover. Um, or the recover... Or before, I mean. Um... I definitely think he should have went for like lead seed or recovery instead uh but yeah uh porygon's in now and that means toxic is gonna go away so there it goes he could go for a lead seed but you know celebi can take that so he does go for it but celebi does take the lead seed so now what mess is gonna do is go or what ed's gonna do is go into skarmory but mess is gonna predict that and go zapdos and zapdos is threatening as hell thunderbolt comes down but light screen being up to this isn't gonna really matter with that uh that para does suck but he can just switch out anyway and just recover off that back in the arrow as he actually goes for as mess goes for the roar there roar was, roar was actually a pretty aggro play um because that does allow mess to see what that last mon is which we don't know what that last mon ed has yet um again based off ed's team um again he's running like a more mag offense team or i guess like 
mixed offense, something like that. Um, it, it's pretty bulky though. Like again, he has his he has his two walls. Then Mag to be like a to be like a way to uh, again trap the steals. So it must be some sweeper in the back that uh, that Ed has, which is why he doesn't want to reveal it yet. He wants to try and weaken this core down. He wants to try and weaken this core first. Again, weakening these two actually opens up his wall or opens up his can open up his wall breaker. Um, but that's gonna be the hard part from uh, from Ed trying to break down these three. I guess these three right here. Um, but yeah, last is gonna go away now. And now what Ed's gonna do is go for elite seed again. But Celebi comes in on, on the elite seed as Mess brings in Celebi. So now he's gonna be forced to switch back out and bring in the Skarmory as Mess goes for the Calm Mind there. So he goes for elite seed now. Goes for a whirlwind to, to phase it out. Brings in Porygon. I think here he could have just spiked. I think he could have spiked here. Um, I think spike would have would have been better for him. Uh, just to, again, like, guarantee that spike down and just, like, try to, uh, chip down something. Um, because, again, mess, because, again, Ed is, uh, losing a lot of initiative right now. Or is losing, is losing a lot of momentum. Um, so, yeah, with the lead seed being down here, that means that, uh, Porygon can, you know, wear this down even further with the Ice Beam or even T-Wave on the Switch. But he's gonna go into Starmie instead on the Toxic, which was a pretty good play from Mess. Again, predicting Toxic there. Um, again... It's gonna be really tough for for Ed to really get a taunt off because um, Mess has two. Basically, he has three natural cure mons. Especially if Porygon can again like uh, take the natural cure from Celebi, then it can avoid the uh, status. But yeah, with these two having natural cure, it's really tough for him to uh, break down anything with Toxic. So um, so yeah. So what Ed's gonna do here is that he's gonna be forced to switch out and go back into Celebi. So he does go back into Celebi. As Mess is gonna go for a Thunderbolt again, again chipping down the Celebi. Uh, Toxic being down really doesn't bother uh, Mess at all. Uh, but that is gonna chip him down a little bit. Um, goes for a Light Screen here uh, from Ed's side. So goes for the uh, switching in the arrow on the Calm Mind. Um, I definitely think that uh, that Mess made the right play to Calm Mind there, because again, Calm Mind just puts on a lot of offensive pressure against Ed. So arrow being in here. From the light screen is pretty aggro this means he could go for a double edge or even go for an hp bug if he wants to and he chooses to go for an earthquake i don't think earthquake was necessarily a bad play but i think double edge or even h or even going for like rocks i would have been better too um again just to guarantee that damage being on the uh, on the porygon so earthquake again i guess to catch the meta but it doesn't work out on comes the uh, t wave on the uh, pert switching uh, but again, Ed makes the right play to, to, to uh, catch the per or to catch the uh, T wave. In comes the uh, Toxic on the Pori, so Toxic is gonna wear down that Porygon, keep it low. Now what Ed's go what Ed goes for is he goes into the uh, T turn now. Um, so I think this was a good play. Um, again, taking advantage of the Porygon being Toxic is gonna be pretty key for uh, for Ed. Um, now bringing in the Tar is pretty good. Um, Tar being in here um, now after the uh, after the switching into the um, or after the switching. From uh, from Ed bringing in uh, bringing in Pert to bring in Tar and then Mess bringing in the Porygon from the uh, to bring in Starmie. Um, I definitely think this is a lot more favorable for Ed um, because Tar can actually live a can actually live a Hydro Pump from uh, from me unless the me is going to be like modest. But even then, I think modest still does a pretty good chunk anyway. Or I think no, I don't think I don't think modest even kills. Let me just check real quick. Um. So let's see. Let's assume that his T-Tar is going to be like a special tar. Let's say he's going to be something like that versus um, versus Starmie. Again, the calcs aren't really um, updated yet because they actually did update the um, the thing uh, recently. So if it's... Actually, let's not make it that because they don't run. They don't usually run Naughty. Um, let's say he's like Modest. Modest. Yeah, Pump doesn't kill. He would have to get a crit to kill him. Um, now... If if uh, Ed does survive the does survive the um, pump, then Crunch will do a ton. Will actually kill the uh, Starmie, especially because of the uh, the chip earlier. So if he is able to not get crit from the uh, from whatever the Starmie goes for, um, then which I mean is most likely a Hydro Pump. If he does go for if he does you know miss out on the crit. Uh, then Ed gets a pretty, um, or gets a lot of, uh, initiative going because that means his spinner's gone and that means that Skarmory can freely set up spikes and not to worry about the spinner in the back. Um, and then, you know, spikes down are just going to be a lot more, um, or it's going to be a lot more, um, oppressive against mess. So let's see what happens here. 
So turn 38 now. Um, here comes the pump. Gets a crit. That is bad. <laughs> that is just bad for Ed. That crit is very, very ass because now with that crit coming down, that means he can't deal with Starmie. I mean, that means he can't deal with Starmie, and also he's down four. So it's four six. Um, and Ed is just not in a good place right now. It's not looking. It's really not looking great. The Starmie got the crit off, which means that um, which means that now um he can't get his spike down or i mean he can still get his spikes down but again he has to deal with starmie and such so celebi can come in now and celebi can go for a lead seed to get the uh, to get some more recovery off or he can go for an hp grass he could also switch back into skarmory in case you know porygon could come in here so let's see what happens here so it's turn 39 now um if i were ed i would expect the porygon to come in and just go into skarmory um because it seems like starmie uh doesn't isn't going to be running like um is it going to be running Ice Beam? So he can freely just switch out here if he wants to. And I do think that that's better in Ed's, in Ed's position. So let's see what happens. Unfortunately, that does not happen. Um, oh, wait, no, he did. He did switch. But he doesn't get the natural. Oh, wait, no, he still got the natural cure. So never mind. Um, never mind then. So, uh, so yeah, that's still pretty huge uh, with the natural cure coming down for uh, for uh, <laughs> For mess, so my apologies there. I think I messed up my words there, but yeah, the Skarmory can come in here and get a spike down, which is still going to be pretty good for Ed. But um, well, actually, it actually still is pretty good for Ed because with the spike down plus sand, uh, that is going to keep Starmie low again. Again, putting it down like close to seventy percent. I think a little bit under seventy percent um, with sand plus spike. So um, so yeah, the T wave is going to suck though because that's going to mean that Skarmory is going to be slower. But as long as he keeps Skarmory around, he can still kind of deal with the Metagross too. So Starmie's going to come in here as Ed goes for the Whirlwind. That was a very good Whirlwind play because, again, getting more chip on Starmie is what he wants. Um, again, keeping it as low as possible. Um, but unfortunately, Zapdos comes in, which is bad because <laughs> that means that Ed's going to be forced to uh, let... Or he's going to be forced to go into uh, Celebi or even go into, sw or even go into Swampert. Um, I think if I, were if I were Ed, I'd go Celebi here because that's the only switch in. I don't think going pert is really worth it, um, but unfortunately Ed goes for the uh, goes for pert instead. So, um, with the Thunderbolt coming down, um, you know Ed is gonna is gonna be able to absorb that with the pert. So now what Ed can do is he can go for a Toxic to get more damage or to keep uh, Zapdos low, um, because if he keeps the Zapdos low, um, then you know he doesn't have to deal with the offensive presence of this spawn. So let's see what Ed's gonna do. He could also switch into Celebi as well. So he actually is gonna stay in here and take the HP Grasp, which does, which does a ton. Goes for a Surf, which is a lot back because he's in Torrent range or almost Torrent range. Um, so actually, that I think that is Torrent range. Um, no, it's like below 25%. I think. No, that should be Torrent range. Um, cause it's like one third, I think. So not one third. That's like I think I'm wrong. Um. But still, he's in Torn range, um, or, he's, or at least he's close to Torn range. But that surf is going to do a really good chunk to the to the Zapdos to keep it low. Um, so now, um, what Ed can do here is he can go into Celebi, or he could just stay in here and surf. Um, but he does choose to switch out here again. Staying in there to surf is probably a bad play because you know he could just HP Grass again. Um, but instead, Mess decides to go aggro here and just go into the uh, into Medi on the switch and into the uh, Celebi. So a good play on a uh, Mess's part to catch that. Um, and comes a Focus Punch here. Um, Focus Punch is going to do a decent chunk, um, but nothing that Ed doesn't really fear too much. So now what Ed could do is go for Elite C to get more recovery off, or he could just go for a Light Screen if he wants. But I think uh, I think just going for the Elite C is better, but he does recover here instead, which is better for him. Again, keeping the Celebi healthy, um, again, for the uh, Starmie and for the uh, Zapdos and everything else. And comes Arrow here on the Calm Mind. Um, Calm Mind was a pretty aggro play again from Mess. Mess likes to play very aggro. <laughs> he, like he likes to play very aggro on whatever the switching could be. Um, but again, it makes sense. And um, in in Mess's favor, I mean, I mean the call mind is just better in Mess's favor because again, call mind, um, with whatever coverage the Mess ha what, whatever coverage this help he has, which is probably psychic, um, that's just gonna do a lot of damage anyway. Um, it can pretty much one v one uh Mess's or Ed's own Celebi even with the light screen up, because he could potentially get some some uh, special drops too. And um, Ed can't really do much back to uh, to mess with Celebi. So Arrow is his only way to really oppress it. So now what um, Ed could do is that he's in a he's in a pretty interesting spot. Um, there's no spike down yet. Um, 
but he can still get some damage off and keep Porygon low or whatever else comes in. Um, so in it's still in Ed's favor, even though he's still like down down two or down by four. Um, so what he could do is go for a double edge in case you know Zapdos can come in on a potential earthquake, or again just double edge in general is just good, it's just good overall. Um, so let's see what Ed's gonna do here. He could also just HP bug two and try to get rid of the Celebi. But what Ed is gonna go for is go for the double edge, which is definitely the right play to make because um again more damage on whatever comes in is just useful um if he did hp bug um and then sell b1 for like psychic or whatever it didn't really matter too much because arrow could still live the psychic even at plus one um an arrow doesn't have to fear like hazards or anything uh because you know it's flying type you know there aren't any stealth rocks in gen in gen 3 so um again it's better for uh for ed to go for double edge or even again hp bug but double edge is the better play because again catches zapdos catches the porygon still catches starmie and can still potentially oko and also he's faster than it and it does a decent chunk to metagross even if it is defensive and also you can just go back in a pert even if it is low but um but still he he still has a lot of initiative going he still has a skarmory as well which can still spike down so overall double edge is the right play to make so now what ed is going to do is go for double edge again because he wants more damage on whatever comes in so he does go for it keeping the meta low which is good so now it's at 56 percent or i mean 62 percent because of the uh the lefties in comes the uh skarmory on the mash um mash is going to come down not doing that much but now what ed can do is get some initiative going so now he's starting he's starting to get some momentum mash comes down again no plus one yet spike comes down here and i think right here i think right here is a pretty important play um i think what ed should do if i were him again if i was in his position for this turn right here for turn 52 i'd probably just spike down again again getting that third spike down is just useful and also um potentially actually no skarmory can no skarmory can potentially live a thunderbolt i think from this range if he's not modest um but I don't know. I'm, it's still kind of it's still kind of tough to tell because that crit on on T tar. But again, usually T tar doesn't die um, unless you get a spike down. Then you, then it can die to the uh, to the pump. So um, I do think that uh, that Ed's in the better spot to just spike down. But let's see what he's gonna do here. So at least he's gonna or the lefty is gonna come up. He's gonna he's gonna go for the protect. Um, sorry about that. He went for the protect there. Uh, just got for the boom, which is fair to make. Um. Yeah, it's definitely fair for him to boom for him to uh, predict the boom. Cause if uh, if Mess does boom, uh, then that means that Medi plus Zapdos is gonna be uh, it's gonna be pretty uh, gonna be pretty threatening to him. Um, and also Porygon. Well, I mean, well, you could also spin anyway with Starmie, then Starmie just puts on pressure like right there. Um, so yeah. Uh, what Ed's gonna do here again if I were him I'd still spike down even if he does go for boom um but let's see he is gonna go for the whirlwind instead I don't I really don't like the whirlwind play that Ed went for I do think that spike is better um also for mess he actually needs to keep meta so that way he doesn't lose too well to arrow so that's why you know he wanted to go for the match instead just to keep it low and maybe try and scare him out to make him bait the uh to make him scared of the boom so but again, Ed didn't fear it, but I still think he should have spiked there instead of going for the uh, for the whirlwind. Um, while he does keep the cell below, it's still not going to be that great, to be honest. So, let's see what happens here. He goes for Elite Seed here, and he tried to go for a spike there, I'm assuming. I'm pretty sure he tried to go for a spike there, tried to whirlwind. Um, but yeah, that pair, that pair there kind of sucks there. So now Celebi's going to be back to uh, almost full um, at 82% now. So now he goes in the arrow on the Psychic. I don't think that was a good play. Um... If anything, he should have went back into Celebi because Celebi can still get some initiative going, if he, even if he does Calm Mind. Um, so let's see. Psychic comes down, keeping Arrow low, which I don't think is really that beneficial for Ed. Um, but now what Ed can do is go for a double edge again, um, as he still puts on pressure, and he could also HP bug too. So let's see what Ed's gonna go for. He's gonna uh, mess gonna sack the uh, Medi there to the uh, double edge slash HP bug. So there goes Medi. Now in comes Metagross as Ed is going to have to go back into Skarmory or he can go into Pert. But he does choose to go Skarmory since Skarmory is a lot healthier than Pert. Comes a uh, Mash and then Mess gets a plus one. That's huge. That means that Skarmory's going to die in two now uh, to Mash. Um, but it also means that Ed's kind of forced to go for a spike here. So he has to get his third spike up to get some initiative going. But he goes for protecting Zed to, get, to make sure that he's like, a little bit healthier. Um, so let's see. 
So Ed is going to go for the spike here or go for a whirlwind. And he is going to go for the whirlwind. Because again, this thing being at plus two is still pretty threatening. Uh, but, but Zap, but not Zap, this Metagross is just, you know, healthy again. I mean, it's, uh, it's a little bit healthier than it was before. Um, being back up to, I think about, I think about 60%. Um, especially after lefties. So, now with the, uh, with Zap just coming in here. Uh, what Zapdos can do um, after being dragged in is that it can go for a Thunderbolt, again getting more initiative off. Um, as Zapdos, even being at 9%, is still useful. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, or basically 2%, but um, let's see what happens here. Ed's going to switch out and go into Celebi on the Thunderbolt, which doesn't do too much. Um, now what Ed can do is just go for an HP bug, or, H or go for like HP grass, whatever he has to deal with Zapdos. Um, brings in the Starmie there on the light screen. I, oh man. <laughs> this, I gotta talk about this play right here. I think, again, again, I think Ed made a, made a miss, made a misplay here. I'm um, going for the light screen there. Maybe he was assuming that, um, hold up, did my music stop? Okay, no, my music didn't stop. Um, <laughs> okay, so maybe, maybe he was assuming that, um, that he'd switch out, or that mess would switch out and go into something else. Maybe, like, go into, go into Porygon. I think maybe that's why, but I don't know. I don't know. I think in Ed's... I think Ed should have just went for the damage, if anything. I think going for the damage was better instead of just going for the light screen. Because if you went for the damage there, it would have kept Starmie low, and also was, it still would have killed Zapdos, and he would have gotten one Mon down. Um, besides, you know, letting the damage come down right there. Or, I mean, besides him getting the light screen up. Because... If he gets the light screen up, what, is, what does it really help him do? It doesn't really help much. And Celebi can still live in Ice Beam even at the range that he's at. Um, unless he gets crit, which is also possible. Um, but now Mess has the option to spin. And he can freely do it, even if Celebi is here. He doesn't care about it. So he does go for the spin there, and the Elite Sea comes down instead. I really think Ed should have went for the damage, but... Um, again, if he, has, if he has a move to hit Zapdos or hit whatever... I think he should have went for it, honestly. Like, he was playing Celebi pretty passive up to this point. So I think he should have I think he should have went a little bit more aggro. And now because of that spike being gone, that means that all his hard work from Skarmory shouldn't go to waste, but especially with the Skarmory being so low. So I definitely think Ed should have been more aggro with the uh, Celebi here. And now what he can do is go for HP grass, but it's kinda too late because Celebi or because the Skarmory is already like um already did what he needed to do. He should have went for that on the switch in. Um, that would have been a crazy play if he did go for it. But yeah, Porygon comes in here now, gets the natural cure. Um, Ed's gonna go for the HP grass, keeping it low. But yeah, as you saw, it did 21. It did 21%. So again, going back to like earlier in the match when the Porygon was at plus one, even with the uh, Calm Mind pass from uh, from Celebi, I think if he did, get, I think if he, I think if Ed did go for a Thunderbolt, it still would have done a decent chunk to Porygon. Um, cause yeah, this Celebi, I'm assuming it does have some social attack investment because if he fought, cause like if he fought a Doug. Doug uh, wouldn't die, so he needs some investment to make sure that Doug can die um, on the switch in, or I mean, just in general. Um, but yeah, uh, goes for Elite Seed now, but now uh, Mess can just recover off that damage and not have to worry about or not have to worry about anything. So goes for the uh, goes for the recovery there, gets Elite Seeded. Um, now Ed's gonna switch on going to Skarmory on the switch in into Celebi. So now Celebi's in here, and Celebi can just calm mind up again. Um, or it could just go for a Elite Seed. Goes for a Psychic instead to get damage off. Gets a drop too. And Ed finally gets his spike down. So that's good. Um, Starmie's still low, which is still good. Which is still like in Ed's favor. Um, now what Ed can do is he could also... He, is, uh, he can still HP grass something if he wants to. Um, he can still HP grass Zapdos. He can still HP grass Starmie and still not lose anything. Um, if, he, like, if, he can, uh, if he can get this off. But... Ed's gonna go for the protect there, get some trying to get some recovery. But Mess is gonna go for the calm on the protect, which is a really, really good play again. Getting more pressure on uh putting more pressure on Ed. So Psyche is gonna knock out the Skarmory there. And now Ed can can bring an arrow and put some offensive pressure. He can go for a double edge, which will force which will force Mess to sack something. So he does choose to sack the Starmy, which is good on his part. Sacks that and I can bring in the um bring in the Metagross as Metagross can take HP grass. We can take can take the HP bug as you guys saw. In comes Pert on the mash. Which is gonna do 20%, which is huge. Um, not like crazy, but you know, he could take the hit anyway. He, could, he can go for the protect here. Um, goes for the protect on the EQ. And now that um, Ed is in um, torrent range, also is also forgot to mention that Mess's um, Metagross is faster, so he can still 
So Mask can still potentially get an Earthquake crit here or an Earthquake or a uh, Mash crit, and he can still knock out the Pert. Um, now if he doesn't get either of that, then S could be doing a lot of damage with the Surf. So let's see what happens here. Goes for an Earthquake, doing 24%. Surf comes down, gets a huge ass crit. That crit mattered more. Actually, no, that crit didn't matter more than the uh, than the Tar crit. It, de it definitely didn't, but it was still useful though. Because now with meta being gone, that means that Arrow has a lot more freeway against these three right here. Um, again, that spike down is still useful for um, it's still useful for Ed, um, because now um, he has a much he has a much higher chance with Arrow to uh, potentially win him the game. Um, so yeah, so Pert is you know gonna get sacked here because he doesn't really need Pert at this point. Um, but also you got to look at this. You have to look at this. His Pert's faster. Ed's Pert is faster than the Porygon. That means that Ed could go for a Tautic here. If he goes for a Tautic here right now, he could actually win with, he has a better shot winning with Arrow, with, I mean, bring with Arrow plus Celebi, uh, because, again, um, again, he'd have to fear, uh, Toxic and everything, or, I mean, he'd have to fear, he'd have to fear the, um, fear Arrow more than fearing Celebi. Granted, if, uh, if Ed makes a misplay with Celebi and brings it in on Porygon, then Porygon could trace the natural care again, and then natural, and then the Atontic is null and void. Um, but still, I think in Ed's, in Ed's, like, perspective i think that surfer going for taunting is the better option here so ed does go for the taunting which is a good play um he still he also got the surf there too surf still, still would have done a good chunk anyway um actually i need to see this since he is defensive let's see so porygon porygon 2 versus um swampert again this is like the this is like the normal count that most people usually use for uh for Porygon, they don't usually go like a lot of uh, investment in, in Spadef. So, Surf did 23 to 28 percent. Now, if we go to Torrent range, so Torrent being at like, let's go to like 25 percent. I guess he was at 12 percent. So, Torrent being at around that range, Surf still does a good chunk. 35 to 41 percent. Um, and he's faster too. And with Sam being down too, I think he had a better shot with Arrow if he surfed. I think he actually had a better shot with Arrow if he surfed. Um, Tazik is still good, but Surf just guarantees damage. Especially because he's faster. I don't think Ed noticed that. I don't think he noticed that, but... Definitely think that the most important thing, uh, when looking at, um, when looking at your team, or looking at your opponent's team, is looking at which Mon is faster. I think that's the key element in, uh, in playing, in playing competitive Mons. You have to figure out, like, which Mon is faster. Once you know that, then you can make it. Then you can make the play that's best for you. So again, for Ed's play, I think surfing is better than going for toxic. Toxic wasn't bad, but surf is just puts more uh more pressure. Technically, Mess could have also sacked Zap could have sacked the uh, Zapdos here too. If he did go for a surf or go for a toxic, that could have been a good play on Mess's part too. Um, and he wouldn't have lost that much. Um, but yeah, I think going for surf is better. But regardless. Uh, Pert's gonna die there, and Toxic's gonna be down. Now, with Porygon being Toxic, but also, you know, taking, or, yeah, being Toxic here, um, it's not really that great for, uh, for Mess, um, cause, actually, you know what? No, this is actually bad. This is actually bad for, um, I mean, this is still bad for Ed. I do think Surfing was better, uh, cause if he did Surf, then Rock Slide was free. Um, again, it could have worn down. It could have worn down a lot faster too. Um, Rock Slide would have done about 30. Actually, wait. Let me check that again. Um, I think it did. Let's see. Rock Slide does 34 to 40 percent. So yeah, he had a better shot going for the um, going for Rock Slide, especially after that Surf damage. If he did go for it, um, because now Ed has to switch out and he has to sack something. So. Or he could do this too and go into Celebi as well. Celebi is also a good play, um, because he doesn't want to get you know hit with the uh, hit with the double or hit with the um, hit with the Rock Slide or anything. Um, but yeah, bringing in the uh, Celebi is a good play, but it also does open up um, Ed's I mean not Ed's uh, Mess's own Celebi. So he could try and double, but I don't think it's worth it because you know Mess could go for an Ice Beam here, and that's not going to be that great for uh. Not gonna be that good for Ed. So let's see what happens here. So turn six. So turn seventy six. Porygon's worn down by Toxic. He's at fifty seven now. Um, fifty seven, fifty eight, most likely fifty eight. So now that he's at fifty eight percent, with the sand being down too, and plus the spike. Um, 
Ed still has a decent shot with the uh, Porygon. Let me check the Double Edge count too. Double Edge does 36 to 43%. So Double Edge is his better option. Um, and has a better shot to kill. Um, or has a higher chance to kill. So let's see what happens. So he does recover here. Never mind. So it was on the uh, on the on turn 76. So turn 76 now goes for the recovery and um, and Ed goes for the uh, light screen. So this Celebi is very slow. This Celebi is very slow. Or maybe I'm missing something. Oh no, the T wave. Duh. <laughs> the T wave. That makes sense. So light screen is gonna come. It's gonna come off the Celebi, which doesn't really help him too much because you know. Um, I guess he could lead C2 if he wants to. Um, again, try and keep this low, but Celebi can come in here too. And Ed is going to go for the lead seed anyway. Um, now, what he, now what Ed can do is go back into the uh, into arrow, and I think he should do it now. Um, and he does go for it. So he does go into arrow here, and he goes for the baton pass into the Porygon. So a good play on his part. Um, but now, with arrow having the having the light screen up, um, he can take Ice Beam, but he has to fear the um, he has to fear he has to fear the uh, T Wave too. So Ed has to go back into Celebi. But then, you know, it's just going to be a back and forth between Ed Celebi and Messi Celebi at this point. Goes for the recovery too anyway, because, again, Mess doesn't fear the arrow. Because the arrow still gets walled by this, <laughs> regardless. Um, or it can still wall. Goes for the HP grass now on the Zapdos switching, so Mess sacks Zapdos. And comes Porygon now, and there goes the natural cure. And that is pretty much going to wrap up this game, because all because now with that Taunted being gone... Um, Ed's gonna lose a lot of momentum. Goes for the light screen again, but he's not really getting much out of this. Um, he could lead seed again, but I don't know if it's really worth it now. Now the, now the Tonsic's gone, and comes Celebi on the lead seed again. Uh, again, like, Ed is losing a lot of momentum, is, lo is losing a lot of momentum here. So, um, goes Arrow now on the Psychic, doing 23%. So, still a lot of damage there. Um, now in comes Porygon again, as Ed is going to go for the HP bug. Double Edge would have been better. Double Edge would have been a lot better. Let's go back. So let's see, he was at 70. Hold up. Okay, so arrow switch. Psychic comes down. Turn 84. Um, turn 84. Who goes on the Porygon? So let's see, 76%. Um, Double Edge... If he gets a high roll, Double Edge can be a 2 KO. I think Double Edge was better. <laughs> I think Double Edge was better here. Yeah, Double Edge might have been better here. 21%, Double Edge doing like 36 to... How much again? Doing 36 to 43%. I think that's a much better... I think that's a much, a much better roll than going for HP Bug. Because even H... Because I think even Double Edge on Celebi would have done a lot anyway. Um, and he still lives Psychic too. So I think Ed had a better shot here then instead of mess. I think he really just kind of threw it here. Or, I mean, he kind of threw it earlier. Now going for Surf on the uh, on Porygon instead. Um, I think he should have done that. But yeah. Um, and comes Celebi here on the recovery. Um, and now it's just going to be back to the beginning. Where Porygon is just going to be here annoying the Celebi. He could go for Light Screen. Ice Beam will do a little damage. But still. Um... Mess can also freeze this thing too. Granted, it doesn't change anything, but still, um, he's not really getting a lot of momentum. Goes for HP Bug there or HP Grass again. Um, you keep going for HP Grass. Honestly, I think it's better for Ed to stay in here and just keep going for HP Grass because, um, because I mean his own Celebi, Messi Celebi is losing more than uh, than Ed Celebi is. Um, so I think if he just kept going for HP Grass, just keeping it low, um, he still can get some initiative going. So I think he should have done that, but he goes to arrow instead, goes for elite seed on the switch in, and now because of this, Celebi's back to full, or is going to be getting a lot more health back, and Ed's win con is getting weakened. Goes into Celebi here on the switch in, but then Celebi can just Calm Mind here, and that's going to be the game now, because after a Calm Mind, like I said, um, Light Stream's going to wear down too, now Ice Cream is going to let this, uh, let this keep Calm Minding up, so now Celebi's at plus two, um, which means that, um, which means that now Ed can go for a double edge again if he wants to, which will still kill off the Celebi anyway. Um, but let's see what happens here. So Ed is going to go for the double edge now, I'm assuming. Or you probably went for HP Bug again. Um, no, goes for the double edge there. Just 39%. So yeah, like I said before, if he did surf there, this would have been in a this would have been in Ed's favor. This would have been tremendously in Ed's favor. Um, but now he has to play around Celebi and uh, 
and Porygon at this point with uh, with lead seeding, with the lead seed recovery and such. Or even just HP grassing. Goes for light screen again, goes for ice beam again. And here comes the freeze. Well, not yet, not yet. It's gonna happen soon though. Watch, wait, wait for it. <laughs> wait for it. Um, goes for the recovery again. Here comes the ice beam again, or the recovery again. Recovery again. Um, goes for HP grass, doing 21%. Here comes the ice beam, and here comes the freeze. Yep, and there it is. There it is. And that pretty much solidifies the game. Uh, that wasn't meant to be an ice joke, but but it was. But <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be the game. Um. Again, I don't think. I don't think he played bad. I don't think. I don't. Re I really don't think Ed played bad here. Um. I think he did a good job against uh, against Mess. Again, Mess is a very competent player. Um. So he um. So again, he knows pretty much like the ins and outs of the meta game. Um, and I don't think Ed played bad. I, I generally don't think he played bad. There were definitely some misplays he made. Again, not going for the damage with with the uh, with Pert definitely cost him. Um, yeah, definitely cost him. Not going for that. Um, what else? Again, I think if he still kept those spikes down a lot earlier, I think if he got those spikes down a lot earlier. Especially, again, dealing with meta and, and Starmie as well. And also the Porygon. Like, Porygon is a threat to his arrow. Um, it, it was pretty much like a main, like a big threat to his arrow. Um, if he did keep those spikes down, then maybe he could have gotten somewhere. Um, but, so, he did not play bad at all. This was definitely one of the highlights of my tournament I'd say. This is definitely a good game. <laughs> this, this was a good game. Um... Again, Ed just, Ed just missed some very small things. Again, not surfing the Porygon would have kept I me mean, not surfing Porygon on like turn 70, I think 71, 72. So remember around then, if he didn't, sur if he surfed there instead of going for Toxic, he could have gotten a lot of momentum there. Um, and then Arrow would have just won. Because this LB was also weakened too. I think it was at like 70% or like 80% somewhere around then. Um... Yeah, he could have double-edged the Porygon at whatever percentage it was at. Um, then he could have won with Arrow. Yeah. Um, again, Mets just played better, though. Just in preserving his Mons. Again, preserving his walls. He played very well with that. Um, but but also the crit on the, uh, on the Tar definitely mattered a ton there. If that crit didn't happen, um, then... Then, well, I think the game would have been a little bit more in Ed's favor than uh, than Mess's favor. Um, granted, granted, I still think that um, no, I, I do think it would have been in a, I think it would have been in a, in Ed's favor more than Mess's favor if he did get that crunch off. Um, as he did say in the chat, he was trying to crunch on the uh, on the pump on the uh, hydro pump crit. Um, but yeah, this is not a bad game at all. I enjoyed this game. I enjoyed talking about this game. Um, I really want to talk about Taiga and uh in in Messi's game, but I feel like I'll be just going on and on about that game. Um, but yeah, this was a very long game. I think this actually might be the longest game of the tournament. Yeah, this might be the longest game of the tournament. Again, he fought hard. I, I got to give him credit. He fought hard against Mess. <laughs> he fought very hard, but um. Again, Arrow was a pretty was a pretty like good mon against Mess. Um, again, Arrow and Mag they were both good against him. So, again, props to Ed. It's a good game. It's a good game. So because of this, so because of this match, um, Mess ends up moving on to face against Taiga. And basically, how I did it was that if Mess beats Taiga, um, then that means that he moves on to the finals of the tournament. And again, like I already said, with the Kirudakis versus uh, Gallade game, um, that game ended up being a forfeit. So that means that at this point, it's pretty much going to be, um, it's going to be Ed, or I mean, it's going to be Kirudakis versus whoever uh, wins the Mets versus Taiga matchup. So I know I talked for a very long time about this game, but I have to talk about this game. I have to. This game was just too good. It was it was really fun. It was actually a very fun game. Um, I have no idea how long how, how long I've been recording. I've probably been recording for an hour. Let's see. Uh, actually, not yet. Not an hour yet. Okay. <laughs> not an hour yet. Okay. So let's see. All right. So 
Um, Mess is going to be using this different account, and then we have Tyga being a uh, aka Dio, Dio Fonsi. Um, let's see. So, I wanted to, so like, this game right here, I was actually very hyped about because I've been wanting, like, I've been wanting to see these guys play each other for a while now. And also, I know that in the, um, I know that in one ADV tournament, uh, they were actually supposed to play each other. Um, I forgot which one it was. I think it was, no, it was the, um, it was the ADV, uh, Summer Seasonal. They were supposed to play, um, or I think they did play. I don't remember too well, but I know that that was a game I really wanted to see. Um, but I think either Dio, I think either Taiga lost that match or, not this match, not, not them playing each other, but I think, I think it was the match before that, uh, that Taiga lost it. So he wasn't able to move on to face against, uh, Mess, if Mess won his game, which I think he did win his game, um, in that tournament, but... But still, that was a match I wanted to see. I w that would have been such a hype match, but I have it here. I have it here. So we get to see it. <laughs> we get to see this match. So let's see. All right, let's see what happens here. So uh, Dio leads off with Mess. Or leads off with... <laughs> Hold on. Let me, let me restart that. Okay. Okay. So so Dio leads off with Mens as um, Mess leads off with Meta. Wow. That was, a, that was kind of a tongue twister. Let's bring in Skarmory as um, Mess brings in Gyarados. So... This is interesting. Also, um, you know, he switches out um, on the Skarmory and then brings in um, brings in Mag. So, this is interesting, you know. Um, just like in terms of like what Mess is showing right now. He's showing that he's running a Mag offense team. Um, so, Mag offense is usually paired with like Sweepers. So, Gyarados and like Mence or Gyarados paired with, um, paired with like... Yeah, Gyarados paired with uh paired with Salamence or Gyarados paired with um paired with like Titar. Um they work pretty hand they they can work hand in hand on teams like this. Um so because again their job is to trap the uh because again Magneton's job is to trap the steel and then the sweepers just do the sweeping. So um so yeah the trap the trap on Skarmory is pretty huge. Uh but um Dio manages, manages to get the spike down. In comes a Thunderbolt from Mess doing a doing a ton. Um, Skarmory barely lives, it gets like two spikes down, which is good for him, but now Skarmory is going to drop there. So now what Taiga goes for, he brings in the uh, T-Star, T-Star is in here now, and T-Star can go for a Fire Blast, but Mess is going to go for the sub there on the Fire Blast, which was, which was a good plan, his part for shouting for the, uh, whatever Tar could do. In comes Gyarados now, Gyarados is in Fear Spikes, goes for Aurora, and in comes Meta to take some chip from Spike. So this is good. Also reveals that he's left these on the uh, Meta. In comes Pert on the Mash, doing not that much damage. So that tells us that this Meta Gross might be mixed or, or not mixed. It's definitely physical. <laughs> it's definitely physical. Um. So yeah. Um. Physical probably gonna be like a Boomer most likely because he needs a Boomer to remove like other walls for uh. I mean, Mess needs a Boomer on his team to remove like other walls for uh for his sweepers. Again, like like a uh, Pert for example. Uh, booming on Pert opens up Gyarados and also opens up potentially a Tar if he has one, or a, or an Arrow, um, if he has one on this team. So, so yeah, um, Pert can wall, but not it can't take a Boom though, not very well. In comes Celebi on the incoming Hydro Pump miss, so pit, so the pump is gonna miss there, um, which doesn't really matter too much. Um, but yeah, uh, Dio's gonna go for the protect there. I mean Taiga, sorry, I get them mixed up. But Taiga's gonna go for the is gonna go for the protect there. Psychic comes down, but you know Mess is gonna miss that. Comes Dia, in comes Jirachi from uh, from Taiga. So now it's it's Pixie on Pixie action, or I guess yeah, I guess so. <laughs> wow, that sounds kind of messed up. In comes so in comes Elise here. Comes a Toxic off from uh, Taiga. So Celebi's gonna be worn up. It's gonna be worn down by the Toxic. Um, but it doesn't really matter too much because of the Leech Seed there uh, nullifying that toxic damage. In comes Tar on the Baton Pass from the Celebi. And now in comes Metagross, which is going to be faster and also puts some offensive pressure on the Tar. As Tar is not faster, he's supposed to go into Perk here on the Earthquake. So Tiger's going to predict that and take the Earthquake from Perk. Um, now in comes a Boom, and there goes the Perk. So now with Perk dying, um, this means that Mess has a lot more leeway with not only his Gyarados, but potentially his other um sweeper that is um that gets walled by pert now it doesn't get walled by pert anymore so um so yeah um this is pretty big uh now what now what could happen here what what's gonna happen here um mess can just go right into a sweeper um and again just get some just get like some offensive pressure like right off bat with gyarados um or he could go into mag and then you know try and trying to 
get some damage off early on potentially on potentially like a Jirachi or something. But I guess you'd have to fear like Fire Punch or something too, especially with the spike being down too. Um, but let's see what Mess is going to do. So Mess is going to bring in the Gyarados, like I said, brings in the Sweeper. Now in comes Gengar. So Gengar being in here means that Taiga could go for a Thunderbolt here, and he doesn't want to take a Thunderbolt. So he has to go into something else to take Thunderbolt. Um, as again, like I said, he doesn't want to take it. So he goes he goes into Celebi, potentially on the Thunderbolt. But Taiga goes for the goes for the uh, Burn. The Burn is good. The Burn is good. Um, it's a good mid-ground because not only does it deal with Gyarados, but it also catches whatever else comes in. Uh, the burn, capitalizing on Celebi's good, keeping that low, uh, even though it can just switch out. But again, with Spike being down too, um, again, still it's just better overall for uh, for Mess. But yeah, as you can see, his Celebi's going to be a offensive variant as a Psychic Gauge during Leech Seed and Baton Pass. So, um, so again, he's going to be pretty aggro with this uh, with the Celebi. Now, what Taiga could do, Taiga could go for a... Uh, I don't think Boomy here is good. He needs this for the uh, for the Gyarados if it has Thunderbolt. So I think what Taiga's gonna do here is he's going to switch out because he needs to keep this. Because I don't think he can kill. I don't think he can kill with Fire Punch or whatever he has. So he has to go T-Tar here on the Psychic. So good play on his part going for that. Um, now pretty much um Mess has to let this Celebi go as he goes for Giga Drain, doing a lot back, but Crunch is gonna do a lot more as Crunch is gonna bring him down to uh, two percent, but the Sam will knock him out. So there goes the Celebi. So now in comes Gyarados, as Gyarados is gonna be very off, it's gonna be very like aggro here. Goes for a DD, but <laughs> but Taiga don't care, he's gonna phase it out. In comes Lax here. So Lax is um Lax is pretty interesting. Um again, we already know what is what uh what Taiga's gonna do. Or I guess you, if you don't know, he's gonna go into Gengar, because he this is his only Gengar or this is only a uh, normal immunity. So that means that Gengar can burn this thing and then you know he can get then um then Dio can get some um, initiative going with potentially his tar or even his uh mints, which we don't know what kind of mints it is yet. But usually if mints is the lead, it's gonna be like some kind of mixed variant. Um or it's gonna be mixed mints, which mixed mints is definitely the better option when you're using Salamence in my opinion. So So yeah, um let's see what happens here. So he does phase it, um, brings in the lax. So now what he could do is go for a phase again, as Dio is going to do just that, and he's going to phase him out again. So in comes the Mag. So Mag can go for a Thunderbolt, um, as you know, he could potentially paralyze it, or just, you know, like, uh, yeah, there's the para. Goes for a Fire Blast and misses, so that's huge. That, that miss is very ass. Um, now with that miss coming down, um, that means two things. Um, it means that, one, um, Mess can kill off the Mag, or can kill off the, uh, I'm sorry, Mess can kill off the Tar with Thunderbolt. Um, or, um, I mean, that's his only option. That's all he can do. He doesn't want to take, he doesn't want to take anything else. He doesn't want anything else on his team to take damage. So he may as well go for a Thunderbolt and then, you know, take this out if he wants. Um, Taiga's only option is to go into Jirachi and then potentially try and get a wish off. So he's going to do just that as Tar is not going to take the Thunderbolt as you, as you guys saw. So Thunderbolt comes down on Jirachi. Jirachi can take the hit decently well. Um, so now it comes a wish here. Goes for another Thunderbolt from Mess. Thunderbolt doing a lot back, but now Jirachi can just go for a Protect to get some health back, and then wish pass again to try and keep Titar as healthy as he can. So he's gonna do, he's gonna try and do just that because this is because I mean this roar on Titar is gonna allow him to try to play around the sweepers here. So that's gonna be his job, or that's what he's gonna try and do with the uh, with the Tar. So now in comes Lax on the wish. So now. Um, D so now Taiga, sorry, again, I keep getting the mixed up. So now Taiga's gonna go into the T-Tar from the Wish. Um, and comes the, uh, Curse on Mess. Uh, so Mess is going to try and get some damage off on this Tar with the Lax. But now, um, but now Taiga can just phase this out and go for Aurora as he is able to break through Para and then, then just phase it out. So now Mag is back. He can go for a Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt's gonna come down, do a, do a good chunk to the uh, Tar, but Fire Blast will knock out the Mag and there goes Mag. So Mag is gone. In comes Gyarados. Again, you already know the drill. He has to try and phase this out. If he can phase it, then he's, then he's gonna be in a good spot. He has to do it here. He's gonna try and do it and he is gonna get it off without the para coming through, but now in comes Arrow. So Arrow is gonna be Mess's last mon. Um, like I've said before in the last game with um with the uh, Ed versus Mess matchup, um Arrow is dangerous, especially in the late game, because everything's already worn down to the point where Arrow can just sweep at this point. So um so what uh Dio's gonna have to do, or Taiga, I mean. I'm sorry, I always get that mixed up. So you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna say Taiga. So Taiga, Taiga, what Taiga's gonna do? Taiga has to go for, has to let the T-Tar go because he has no other switching. Um, because again, Mess can just go for an earthquake here and he doesn't lose much. 
Um, he could also go for Rock Slide and potentially, you know, like, para punch this if he wants to. Um, again, Mess has a lot more options than Taiga does. So, all Taiga can do is... Again, he could keep this around to try and keep it as a phaser, or he could sack it. Let's see what he does. He just he just shoots the sack it to the earthquake, so there goes Tar. Then comes Mence here, as Mence can do quite a bit of damage here, you know? Um, since he has mix, of course. And comes the Gyarados now. Um, but this is mixed, so Dragon Claw's gonna do a decent chunk to that Gyarados, keeping it low. Um Gyarados is usually pretty bulky in ADV, because uh, you want to make sure that it can take some hits. Um and then get off like a safer DD. So, uh, so yeah, Gyarados is a lot bulkier in, uh, in this gen, I'd say, compared to the, uh, compared to future, to, f can compare to, uh, I can't talk, compared to future generations, Gyarados is pretty much, like, at its bulkiest in this gen, um, I guess you could argue GSC, but I don't think Gyarados has any use in GSC, so let's just talk about ADV instead, in ADV, this thing is very bulky, um, I guess you, you could even argue um, DPP as well, since DP, in DPP you could run like the uh, the Sleep Talk set um, with a Waterfall and, and a Roar to phase things out. Um, but yeah. So, Taiga can only go for a Dragon Claw, keep this thing low as much as possible. Um, so let's see what he's going to do. He's actually going he's actually gonna to switch on going to Gengar. And now in comes the DD. So, so the thing you got to know about Gyarados is that Gyarados likes to run, or can only run like two or is known to run two different hidden powers hp flying and hp rock now let's break this down with arrow being his sweeper arrow usually runs both of those it already has the coverage that gyarados art that gyarados normally runs being hp rock or yeah being hp rock or hp flying so with arrow being here um you know arrow usually runs like hp rock or hp flying so that means that this gyarados could be something else <laughs> it could be something else. So, I don't know what it could be. It could be HP Bug if he wants to deal with Celebi, because Celebi could be an issue for his team. But again, um, Mess already has answers to that in Metagross and even Arrow to some extent. And even and also Lax, and also Lax 2 if it is a Boomer, which I'm assuming that Mess probably does have Boom on this Lax 2. So, this Gyarados could be something dangerous. Like, again, the only option you could think would be HP Bug, but no. No, this this shit's crazy. This shit's wild. You guys are gonna don't blink, don't blink, cause if you blink, you're gonna miss it. Watch this shit, dead. <laughs> oh yeah, like what I like yo, like wait, when I saw this shit, when I saw this shit, I was just like, this man, this mess. What are you on? <laughs> like mess, what are you on, bro? HP Ghost Gyarados. It ain't HP Dark. It ain't HP. It is definitely not HP Dark. That's HP Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like, yo, this shit, this shit was funny. This shit was funny. Like, <laughs> like, HP goes Gyarados. You would never think, you would never think about that. You would never, nobody, nobody would ever think about that. I'm pretty sure it's been, I'm pretty sure it's been done before, but like, still, seeing this is just so cool. Um, but yeah, this also means that Taiga is kind of fucked now because with Garrett, with Gengar being gone, uh, that means, you know, he can't, I mean, he probably did have Thunderbolt, actually, which is why he, uh, which is why he had, um, why he had, um, why he kept it in the back for later, because he knows that this Gengar probably being bulky means it can lift the, uh, HP bug, or HP rock, or HP flying that Gyarados did have, but unfortunately, Mess hit him with the HP ghost, so... <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, in comes Mets. In comes the uh, Mets now. So Mets can go for a Dragon Claw, keep this Gyarados low. Goes for a Double Edge now. Double Edge is gonna keep him low enough to the point where Dragon Claw can kill him. Uh, so yeah, there goes Dragon. There goes the uh, uh, Gyarados now. Arrows here, and Arrow can easily go for an Earthquake, and he is going to go for that. And Mets is gonna do just that with the Arrow, and there goes Jirachi. So, uh. Taiga could have stayed in with Gyarados, or he could have stayed in with Mints and tried to go for a Dragon Claw, predicting the Earthquake, but I don't think it's really worth it now. I don't think it was really worth it at that point. Um, it would have been a good play, though, if he stayed in, but, um, I mean, the only, op the only option that Mess, that, uh, Mess did have was going for Earthquake, though. Um, but even if he did Rock Slide, he still got, a, he still would have gotten a lot out of it, too. Especially against his own, uh, his own Lax, too. So, uh, so yeah. Um, in comes the Lax now on the, uh, Mence switch. So, Mence is back to get the Intimidate drop off, but 
still, even at minus one, this thing can still do a lot with Dragon with the uh, Body Slam. Brick Break comes down, but but Boom's gonna come down even harder. So there goes the Boom, there goes Mints, and that's gonna be the game after an Earthquake. So yep, that's the game. <laughs> <laughs> HP Ghost, man. HP Ghost Gyarados. That that is some that is some crazy tech. Like I've seen some tech in my day. Believe me, I have. I've seen a lot of I've seen I've seen a lot of really cool techs, especially from watching um Callus's Invitational. Um, seeing a lot of uh seeing a lot of known uh, ADV players using a lot of cool techs. But this one right here, this was cool. This is very cool. Um, great. I think the king of techs has to go to H lot. I, I have to say, I think it might go to H lot. It's a, no, no. You know what? Damn, that's hard to say. That's hard to say. I, I really don't know who'd be the king of techs in ADV. I'm pretty sure that I'm not like... I don't know. I, I feel like it had to go to h Slat or it had to go to Vapakudo. It, it has to go to one of those two. Like, they're both like crazy with their techs. But, I don't know. h, h Slat has some really crazy... That's some really crazy... um, Some really crazy techs. But still, um, again, that's just going off topic. Uh, but this was a very good game, I have to say. It came down very, it was very close. But that HP Ghost really just hammered it. <laughs> it really did. Um, if if uh, Taiga did predict the Earthquake um, and did go for the damage on Arrow, I don't think it... No, I think that didn't matter. I think it would have mattered. Because um, then he would have had a better shot against his uh, against his Arrow too. Also, Jirachi did live the Earthquake too if he did keep it at, if he did keep it like at full. Um... But I guess it was too risky for him to make, because if because again the rocks like coming down would have just been the end anyway, and he would have just switched into uh, lax and then just start cursing. Then it would have been that. Um, but I guess he could have also like wish protect too. But then he had to deal with um. But then he had to deal with you know the potential pair from the lax. So I understand why he, I can see why he made the play he did. Or he probably just gave up too. That also worked too. <laughs> But um, but still, this was a good game. I think I think both these games are very, are very fun to watch, um, and we're, we're very, and we're a very fun to break down. So I know this vid has been like an oh, it's been over an hour, but I really wanted to talk about this game. So now, so now um, I could talk about game two. I, I could talk about game two as well. Game two was pretty close, um, but this one was also pretty long as well. <laughs> And I don't want to be here for like two hours talking about like three games. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to do that. But as you guys saw in the results, it seems like Mess actually won in this match. So that means that Mess moves on to um, round or moves on to the finals of my ADV OU tournament. So, um, so yeah, so for the finals, it's going to be Kirudakis versus, um, versus Mess. Uh, the match will be happening uh, sometime by the end of this week. Or I mean, the match the match has to be done by sometime. I mean, sometime by the end of this week. So um, so yeah, I will be covering those. I will be covering those uh those matches live, and uh, I'm pretty excited to see how the uh, how the match goes, um, or how these matches go. So yeah, um, if you guys did enjoy my breakdown, I know it was very long, but I, I was very excited about this game and the other game. So uh, so yeah. Um, if you guys did enjoy my breakdown of these matches, please make sure to leave a like and comment. And also, if you're new to the channel, please feel free to subscribe as well. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much that. Um, again, I enjoyed talking about both these games. They were very fun. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys um, for the finals of my ADV OU tournament. So again, stay tuned for that. And uh and yeah, gonna try and get a showdown live sometime around or sometime during this week. So you know, be on the lookout for that, of course. So uh, so yeah, be safe, wash your hands, and I will see you in the next Pokemon showdown live slash old gen showdown live slash whatever I do. Peace.